embraced by Shadow, an embodiment of a century-old lineage of assassins who has since found her path as an acclaimed performer, this is the story of Risha Mao. Risha was born in the Calvert Republic, where she immediately was taken under the tutelage of her father. So stringent were the teachings, Risha had no memory of her mother from whom she was separated at an early age. This was all for the sake of becoming a legendary assassin. For over a century, the role of this figure, Yin, passed from descendant to descendant, and each pupil was to inherit all the skills and techniques of the previous generations. Nothing was to be left behind, and ultimately it would forge the successor into the embodiment of Yin. Her father was neither strict nor kind, he was simply there to teach, and to Risha, these arduous days of training became her norm. Through Sunday school, she would learn to forge connections and contact people, and combined with her father's teachings, she was finally able to become Yin. However, one does not become the legend while their father lives, and thus Risha continued her training dispassionately, honing her skills until the day that she would take the mantle. Her father as the current Yin would go out on missions and Risha would await his return, where he would explain the work in more detail. And to Risha, it became clear that the tasks were sinister and steeped in shadow, but she accepted it, for it was all she had. Her life would continue like this for a time, but eventually, her world was to shatter in front of her. Despite his strength, Risha's father contracted an incurable disease, something that he refused to take surgery for, and even with all the techniques and talismans utilised by Yin, none of it could save him from illness. As if accepting fate, he one day calls Risha to his bedside and orders her to kill him. But for the first time in her life, she refused. This demand was something Risha could not accept, it made her feel something that she had never felt before. Fear. Realising this immediately, her father smiled and offered her some last important words. Words that wouldn't have meaning for Risha till years later. That is also you. You should decide how your yin will be. One month later, her father passed away, and Risha took on the role of yin just as she was trained to do. Soon after, she took on a long-term contract with Heiyue to assist in unseating the dominant figures in Crossbell. As she surveyed the land, she found herself stumbling upon a public training session within a certain theatre, where the lead actress immediately took an interest in Risha. Persistence eventually broke through Risha's guard, and from that point, she became a key member of the Arkin Seal Troop, the Princess of the Moon and thus her double life as stage actress by day and assassin by night began. As if taking to her role immediately, Risha finds herself thankful to her stage partner, Ilya Platier, the woman who initially brought her into the troupe. Finding a non-conspicuous apartment in the city's downtown district, she dedicates herself wholly to both her life as Yin and the Princess of the Moon, finding the training far more arduous than she first realised. But it felt oddly satisfying to her to perform on stage and create something beautiful. It's not inaccurate to say that Risha starts to feel she is finding her own identity after so many years, something that she truly feels passionate about, and she has Ilya to thank for that. Her gratitude to Ilya is reflected in her worry for her as well, as Risha finds herself looking into a particular issue, the case in point being a threatening letter addressed to Ilya from someone named Gin. Though Ilya is unfazed by such a threat, Risha is concerned for it seems that someone is trying to frame her. Unbeknownst to Ilya at first, Risha enlists the help of a new group established within the police, a team that had recently been featured in the news after an event in the downtown district. Making her way to the SSS building, she asks them for their assistance in the matter, eventually forcing Ilya to pass the letter over for their investigation. But regardless of her seeming danger, Ilya won't accept putting the new preview performance or debut performance of Golden Sun Silver Moon in jeopardy, 
and after the SSS get to investigating, Risha is immediately dragged back to training. However, a master assassin doesn't just resign themselves to let others do their work, as Risha had contacted her information broker in Yona to relay a message to the SSS, a message that would both test their deductive ability in drawing them to Stargazer's tower, and also where she could test their physical prowess, offering them more information should they pass. Sure enough, the SSS make their way to the summit of the tower, finding Yin atop the bookcases, where he wastes no time in putting them to the sword. As expected, the SSS passes the test, and Yin discloses what he knows, also asking them to clear his name. On the day of the preview performance, as Risha and Ilya perform together in an official capacity for the first time, she gets her wish as the mayor's secretary is arrested for attempted murder against Mayor McDowell. No doubt, this was a power play by Ravache to eradicate the new threat in Heiyue by framing them and Yin in an attempted assassination of Crossbell's mayor. With innocence proven, Risha makes her way back to the entertainment district and prepares for the public performance on Crossbell's 70th anniversary festival. Of course, this event wasn't solely beneficial for Heiyue alone, as Risha had also found some worth in these recent events. She had found a group who allowed her to see Ilya as more than just an unachievable ideal. They allowed her to believe that she could shine just as much as the sun that performed with her. Events continue to unfold in Crossbell, and the fabled Schwarz auction sees a surprising twist, an event that sees the credibility of Ravache take a downward swing. As Risha watches on, her employers are attacked by this wounded lion, forcing them out of office temporarily. With this attack, the assassin is tasked in finding the connection between Ravache and the assailants in human strength. This seeming fever happens to affect the Arkansas troop as well, as one of the members has disappeared after gaining unbelievable ability in such a short space of time. Her investigation eventually leads her to St. Ursula Medical College, where she manages to save the SSS. With their assistance, she is able to find the truth behind this incident, namely the involvement of the remnants of the DG cult and their connection to Ravache. With this information in hand, she has no obligation to assist any longer, and disappears into the night, reporting the information to Chow. This action in itself is obligated in her contract with Heiyue, of course, but she can't help but feel that there is one more reason why she must be in Crossbell on this particular evening. She must be there to protect what is most important to her. A couple of months pass by, and Crossbell is slowly recovering from its longest night. Risha, who has been tasked with fewer jobs by her employers at Heiyue since the incident, finds that the additional rest has contributed to her stage performances, something that doesn't go unnoticed by Ilya. However, this brief moment of respite does not last long, as a particularly dangerous group makes their way to the city. As the West Zamuria Trade Conference comes closer to the fore, Risha is made aware of the Red Constellation, who are currently working a contract of their own. In particular, she hears of a sadistic and brutal commander among their ranks, someone who, to the naked eye, would not seem threatening at all. It doesn't take long for Risha to have her first encounter with this individual, as the SSS with a red-haired girl in tow look to catch a stray cat. It becomes apparent to Risha how skilled this girl, Shirley Orlando, really is, as she effortlessly jumps onto the stage prop to rescue the cat, and with Risha's assistance soon after, the two manage to show glimpses of their true ability to one another. Needless to say, this captivates the war-hungry Shirley, who exchanges pleasantries as a formality, for it's only polite to introduce yourself to someone you consider a rival and it's not long before they get to see each other once again. Sure enough, as political tensions at the trade conference escalate, terrorist groups from both major superpowers commence a joint attack on Orcus Tower, which is swiftly snuffed out by countermeasures employed by both Osborne and President Rocksmith. 
that being the Red Constellation and Heiyue with the assistance of Yin. As they both make their way back to their respective corners after the fulfilment of their contracts, the two groups happen upon each other at an intersection where Shirley immediately shows an interest in the legendary assassin among their ranks. What's more concerning, at least for Risha, is that this frightening girl is able to realise the garments of her disguise are holding back Risha's true ability, as if forcing herself to fight in a body not of her own. Hearing enough, Risha leaves and returns to her practice with the troop. For their heroics at Orcus Tower, the SSS are rewarded with a relaxing vacation at Michelin Resort, where Risha is also invited along with Elia and Sully. For all the world, she appears to be content and happy, but that night she finds herself unable to sleep and ventures to the lobby to gaze at the clear moon. It seems that she is not the only one to succumb to a bout of insomnia, as Lloyd, the leader of the SSS, joins her soon after. Oddly, Risha feels at ease with Lloyd by her side. It's strange that someone can be there for you when you least expect them to be. And despite her lifelong training, Risha is uncharacteristically easy to read, at least for the man sitting opposite her. Why do you laugh with such empty eyes? Risha is taken aback by the perception of Lloyd, how he manages to discern her true face with little to no effort. That ability surprises, but also compels her to disclose her burden, the fact that she will have to leave Crossbell soon in order to walk a path that she doesn't even know the meaning of, as if chained to familial duties. Nonetheless, she is thankful to Lloyd that she is at least able to share her troubles, and with that, she returns to her room and eventually returns to Crossbell with the others where strange flowers are starting to bloom throughout the land. Entrusted with yet another task by Heiyue, Risha's investigation brings her to the marshlands, ablaze with a blanket of pleroma grass. Yet again, as was at St. Ursula Hospital, she bumps into the SSS, who are on a mission of their own to find two missing braces. Teaming up with the group, they eventually close in on the seeming culprits of these recent phenomenon, a group belonging to the mysterious society of Ouroboros. In particular, Risha finds herself drawn to the one clad in armour, a regal and powerful foe that she recognises as the Steel Maiden. Unfazed, she draws her blade. A misguided challenge, to say the least. With a flurry of spear thrusts, Risha is stunned by the Steel Maiden's speed and strength, and just like Lloyd, the Anguis is able to see right through her. Realising her hesitation compared to her father, and as she falters, the mask concealing her identity breaks. Unable to explain, think, or reconcile with those around her, she quickly escapes back to Crossbell. The event forces Risha to end her contract with Heiyue immediately, after which she returns to her performance at the Arkin Seal, one that she considers to be her final. But a peaceful closing curtain, this was not to be. As she watches her potential successor in Sully shine on stage, she notices a shadow in the rafters, metal upon metal, and a sudden crash. The scene before her causes Risha to abandon all logic, replacing it with unfettered rage at the one responsible, Shirley Orlando. As the fires are slowly brought under control, the true scar inflicted on Crossbell and its citizens is made clear, and Risha, believing that she has lost everything precious to her, commits herself to revenge. Unbeknownst to her, however, the radiant sun that she thought she would never see again is passing a message intended for her ears in the near future. Fixated on vengeance, Risha returns to the Heiyue at the Fort of the Sun, purely as a means to avenge the death of Ilya. The cold and emotionless embodiment of Yin had once again taken root within her soul, ready to kill dispassionately, and then leave Crossbell forever. For all intents, Risha was likely to pursue this path to her grave once her renewed contract with Heiyue was fulfilled. So it cannot be understated that the goddess of the sky, Adios, was smiling on Risha around this time, as Lloyd, with the assistance of others, manages to find her, and they let her know immediately 
that Ilya has survived. But what strikes Risha is the sheer determination of her mentor and friend. Despite her injuries, she refuses to accept that this is the end, and she will one day perform on stage again, an attitude that is completely in contrast to Risha, who has seemingly already accepted her fate. But her radiant sun offers her a guiding light, words by which Risha finds a deep meaning in. What is the most precious thing to you? Was it the path of yin she inherited? Was it the revenge she sought against the Red Constellation? Or was it something truly dear to Risha, something she knows she could never do without? In a burst of emotion, Risha can't help but exclaim the joy and love she has for the Arkan Seal, that she truly wants to dance on stage again with Elia and Sully by her side, shining in unison with the sun and stars. The shadow that engulfed and drove Risha to be a weapon of Heiyue dissipates from this epiphany. In what can only be described as admirably controlled rage, Chao realises his weapon in Yin is now useless, and ends the contract with Risha once again, allowing her to pursue a path of her own not as the legendary assassin, but as Risha Mao. And this realisation hits her aboard the Merkaba, as her father's words once again echo in her mind. You should decide how your Yin will be. Since the first incarnation of the Assassin, successors of Yin have inherited everything from their predecessors, techniques, connections, and battle prowess. But despite that, each Yin takes on the form of the one who bears the name, and thus the idea of Yin gradually evolves over time. Risha knows she cannot abandon the path she inherited, but there's no reason why her Yin cannot accept the light she found at the Arken Seal, for, as her father once said, that is also you. Despite her father being a teacher in the eyes of Risha for so many years, she finally realises what he was trying to tell her on his deathbed, what he wanted Risha to become. Not just a yin that inherited the shadows, but a yin that reflected his own daughter. He truly did care for her in his own way, and that realisation causes Risha to cry at his passing for the first time, for she has truly felt loss. This is not the passing of a teacher, rather, it is the passing of her own father. She realises that she has changed due to her time in Crossbell. With that enlightened state, she can finally pursue her own path. As the azure tree blooms and the realisation of a millennia-old plan comes to fruition, Risha finally confronts Shirley Orlando once again. However, while at one time she wished only for revenge, Risha now wants to show that she is stronger than the person standing before her. They may have similarities in that they were both raised on battle, and if Risha found pleasure in her tasks as Yin, she might have even become like Shirley. But thankfully, this didn't happen. Risha has found a light at the end of the shadows upon coming to Crossbell, and now she wants to live for her own future with her friends by her side. Sure enough, Risha demonstrates that she has surpassed Shirley, Ilya's strength bolstering her resolve. That strength in hand, Risha works with the SSS to free Kia and erase the Azure Tree, ultimately condemning Crossbell to Imperial rule in 1205 of the Septian Calendar. With her path laid out before her, Risha has become a yin that she can be proud of. A yin who will strive to protect those she cares about. During the Imperial occupation, she is once again able to realise her dream, performing with Sully and Elia after her miraculous recovery. Risha now assists Lloyd and the other members of the SSS in wrestling independence of Crossbell back from the Empire, taking part in covert operations and utilising the skills passed down to her from generations past. 
there is no doubt that more struggles await the state of Crossbell, but its land and citizens can depend on heroes like Risha to one day liberate them. <laughs>